Hi there, and thanks so much for clicking on this video. Uh, my name is Rabbit, and my pronouns are they, them. And today's video is about Cerise, this new doll that I made and I'm trying to like match with. I normally don't like do this look at all. I feel like I look really weird, but it's whatever. Um, so this is Cerise. Um, she's originally a haunted Draculaura doll. So she has like kind of translucent -y skin and like a, a little bit of a different mold than like normal Draculaura. Um, and I decided to make her as kind of a pastel, super cute, like apron wearing, hair clip collecting, um, lots of things, fun beads and stuff in her hair type of, type of character. And I, I really like how she turned out. She also has a bandaid on her nose, my first ever bandaid that I painted on a nose. So, um, that's, that's really fun. And like little star freckles and little like stars in her eyes and super long lashes and, um, She's just a really cute character. So, um, I started her head and hair like a million years ago, like five months ago or something. For maybe less than that, but you know what I mean. And I didn't know I was gonna make like a whole making of video, so I didn't really like film that, but I took some pictures, so I'll like insert those. But this video will have like a little kind of tutorial about how I made her outfit, um, including her socks, her bloomers, her uh, dress, and her apron, as well as like little clips of how I made her hair clips um, and braided her hair and stuff and how I did like the little finishing touches on her, like putting little hearts on her skin and doing things like that. So um, without further ado, if you're interested in seeing how um, this doll went from this, more or less, <laughs> to this, um, then please feel free to keep watching. Here's the doll we're starting with, and I'm gonna cut off her hair really, really short, and then use some tweezers to scrape it out from the inside of her skull. Then I use some acetone to remove all her factory paint, and then I wash the doll, spray it with Mr. Super Clear, and then I can start using watercolor pencils to begin to sketch out her face. I'm doing one eye pink, one eye blue, a little nose band-aid, um, here I am adding the brows and then the blush. Then I draw in her pupils and make some more details in the eyes. Add white um, paint to make star freckles. Then I take a white pencil and make little um, stripes kind of in the lips and in the irises. And that's what it looks like. Then I take the body and spray it with some Krylon matte spray and use some soft pastels to blush it. And then for the hair, I'm taking some yarn and just cutting it at double the length I'd like and then unraveling it to make a bunch of strands of hair. Then I made a bunch of hair wefts and just glued those to her head. Uh, then to make the dress, I'm starting out by drawing a pattern by setting my doll kind of a little off center on a piece of paper and tracing her the top of her shoulder and down her waist and then moving the doll and connecting those lines and writing a note to fold it along the inner side. I'm also going to be adding a little flap to the back of this pattern to be able to add snaps to the sh to the top of the dress. To make the pattern for the sleeve, I'm lining the doll up on the paper and tracing how long basically I want it to be on the top and the bottom, then moving it and um, connecting the lines and writing an arrow on the top to fold it along that line. To measure for the skirt, I'm lining the doll up to where I would like the skirt to reach to and drawing a line across the paper. Then I cut those out and line them up to see where I would like them to connect. I'm taking a thrifted light purple kids t-shirt um, and pinning it in half, and this is gonna be the top of my dress. I'm tracing the pattern for the front and back as well as the sleeves and cutting those out. And then I'm cutting the back in half. You can see that the back is a little bit longer because it's gonna be having those snaps on it and I line up the pattern to how I would like to sew it together. Once it's lined up, I hem the inner sides of each of the backs um, so that I can eventually place some snaps on it and I'm just using a really simple kind of whip stitch, I guess you would call it. And I'm attaching two sets of snaps. Once all the snaps are sewn in, I 
button the shirt together and then I sew the tops of each shoulder together, um, the front to the back, um, with the good sides always facing each other so that you can't see the seam and leaving like a little gap for the neck, which I'll hem um, just a little bit for the neckline. Once the shoulders are sewn together, I can start attaching the sleeves and basically I start in the center of the sleeve and sew outwards on one side and then go back up that side and then through the other side and then back up um, so it's reinforced and then I'm taking little rectangles of cloth to basically make a hem for each sleeve and I didn't use a pattern for these I just kind of cut out a little rectangle. Once that's done I can button it up and then fold it in half and then sew the sleeves together. This is still inside out it's very important that you do all your sewing inside out um, I pin it in place and then sew up the sleeve sides and then up the sides of the top of the shirt part. And then I repeat on the other side, of course. And I like to do um, multiple, like I like to go over the stitches more than once so it's nice and reinforced. Once that's done um, and it's all sewn together, I can turn it inside out, outside in, whatever. Um, I'm using a little makeup brush to help me poke the sleeves out. Then I try it on the doll to make sure that it fits. And since it's fitting pretty well and I'm happy with it, then it's time to make um, the dress part of the skirt. So I'm taking my pattern that I made earlier and just tracing it onto this pink satin material that was like part of a kid's skirt. Then I'm taking um, some lace and attaching two layers at the bottom. Um, I have like one kind of white sparkly thin layer and one really ruffly um, heavy pink layer. So I'm starting with the white layer and sewing it onto the back and then um, attaching the fluffy pink layer behind that so that you can't see either of the stitching very much because I'm trying to sew it as close to the natural hem of the skirt as I can. So once I have my long rectangle of fabric with lace attached to it, I check out how it will fit on my doll um, and I fold it over because I would like um, it to be kind of short because I'm gonna um, put some bloomers underneath and I pin it in place also because this fabric frays a lot, it's really helpful to have a huge hem. So that looks good. So then I'm just taking um, my needle and thread and making a really loose stitch across the top so that I can gather it. Um, you can see I'm just poking in and out, in and out, so that I'm able to pull the thread and um, just make it all nice and poofy. Then I check to see that it fits, and once I know that it does, I um, trim the thread at that length and then line up the shirt to attach it to the skirt part. I'm, of course, sewing it good side to good side um, and just doing it all the way around. And then once that's sewn together, I can turn it inside out and stitch the back together so that there's not just a hole. Um, so just stitching the back up, turning it back inside out, trying it on the doll, and it's a little tight but we make it fit. It's looking pretty good. I'm happy with it. And then I'm taking a little bit of lace and just wrapping it around each of the sleeves to measure how long I need it to be to just make a little lace cuff. If I had thought of this earlier, I probably would have sewn the lace inside the cuff, um, but whatever, it's better late than never. I ended up putting the arm inside to help me not sew the cuff to itself. And then I'm taking a piece of lace and lining it up across the chest because I think it would look cute to have like kind of a little chest lace detail. And then I'm just taking a needle and thread and adding a couple of stitches after I pin it in place to make sure it's secure there. Um, and since she's gonna be wearing an apron, I don't really mind that the stitches are visible because they're not really gonna be visible um, under the apron. Um, but the lace will be like popping out of the top, which is the effect that I'm going for. I know last time my um, hair was in the frame and now my nose is in the frame of this one. So, you know, I'm working on it, but <laughs> we'll see. All right, now it's time to make the apron. And I'm starting by drawing a really rough pattern by just making like a little square for the top. Um, and then cutting that out to see how it will fit, and it looks good. And then I'm lining that up to some paper and drawing kind of like a half circle because I'm gonna gather it at the top. Um, and it looks like it'll fit over the skirt. So I fold it in half so I can get it symmetrical and cut that out of my paper. Now I have an apron pattern, which I trace onto um, an old shirt that basically I cut the top off of so I could wear like a collared shirt without 
wearing a collared shirt and I'm just cutting the pattern out. It's really good to use your own clothes to make doll clothes because then you can match with your dolls. Anyway, cutting the fabric out and hemming um, three sides of the top of the apron. Basically, I'm just leaving the bottom unhemmed so that I can eventually attach it to the skirt portion. So just quickly adding a little hem to each side so we don't have any fraying. And if you don't know how to sew, I mean, it's not that hard, like it's, it's easy to learn, I would recommend it, but you could also just glue, like use fabric glue um, to do these kind of things. Um, for the skirt to hem it, I am making these little slits in the sides of it so it's easier to bend the fabric and not have such um, like square edges when I'm hemming it. I've never had like formal sewing lessons so I know there's probably a better way to avoid this, um, but it works. And since it's still kind of like rough edges, I decided I wanted to use a little bit of lace to cover that up. So I'm taking the same lace that I used on the sleeves of the dress and um, putting a really loose stitch in it so I can gather it um, like I did the skirt earlier. And then measuring so that it's long enough to fit on the apron and cutting the lace there. And then pinning it to the apron so I can sew it in place. I made my little pin cushion. He's a little ghost and I absolutely love him. He's, he's very old. I think I made him when I was like 14, but he's really, really cute. So I'm just sewing together the, the apron and dancing. Cut it up. Okay, it looks like it will fit good on my doll. So then um, I'm taking the top of the apron and putting a really loose stitch in it so I can gather that and make it fit to the kind of upper part of the apron. You know, the waist and the and the shirt part where they connect. So I'm um, lining the uh, the shirt part up on the doll and tracing a line to where I would like um, the, the skirt part to connect. And then I'm sewing those together and adding some ribbon to the top, two pieces of ribbon for straps at the top and then two pieces of ribbon for straps at the waist. I'm just sewing those on, but you could definitely just use hot glue. It would probably be easier and like a little less visible. And I'm using a little bit of a thicker ribbon for the waist. It has like kind of these little loops on it and it's really cute. Um, and this will also help hide the seam of the apron. Uh, then I decided I wanted a little more decoration, so I take more lace. Um, the same one that matches the sleeves and the base and I just um, sewed it to the top of the apron and it looks pretty cute so far but it still needs more cuteness so I'm taking um, a sticky note and tracing a little half heart so I can make a heart pattern um, to make some pockets and I originally wanted to put two but then I ended up just putting one and I think it worked out well but I'm tracing a little heart out of felt and cutting it out and then I use a little bit of fabric glue to put it on Honestly, when you're using little pieces of felt that are this small, any stitches are going to really distort the, the pattern in my experience. So I recommend that if you're doing this kind of thing to just um, use glue. Then I'm making a bunch of little bows out of the ribbon that is used for the straps and stuff. And I'm putting two of those bows on the skirt and one of them on the heart pocket using a little dot of hot glue to secure that. Then I'm taking some tiny buttons and using some tweezers and hot glue to apply them to the waist. And here I am hot gluing um, some tiny little bows to the sleeves of the shirt as a little bit of extra decoration. And then I'm taking some little buttons and putting those on the top of the apron straps. Um, I could have also put it on the dress, but I think it looks cute. Either way, I really like these teeny tiny buttons. They're like really itty bitty. They're a little hard to work with since they're so small, but I think they're adorable. And then I'm just taking some little sticker pearls from the dollar store and um, a little bit of hot glue to attach those as extra little details. Then to make the bloomers next, I'm starting out by making the pattern by putting my doll a little bit off center on the paper and drawing a line from the inner crotch down the leg and how long I want it to go up the hip on the outer leg and moving the doll so I can trace that and connect the lines. And then I'm drawing a line to where I want to fold on the inner side. Then folding some um, fabric in half and pinning it, I'm tracing that pattern onto the fabric from before and then cutting it out. 
Once I have both pieces cut out, I cut up the center of them so that I have four pieces. And then I'll hem each leg at the bottom and then lining up one front and one back piece and sewing up the, the side of the leg. Then I'm taking a little bit of lace and attaching a little strip of it to the bottom of the cuff, cutting it to size. So this is one leg now essentially, and I'm repeating that process, so I have two. Then I pin them together and sew um, the front crotch together essentially, the front butt. Then unfold that and flip it over, and then I fold over the top of the waistband and leave enough room in this little folded over section that I'm sewing down so that I can fit a ribbon to make a drawstring waistband inside of it. And then taking the bloomers, pinning them together in half and sewing up the butt essentially um, while leaving that hole that we just made on both sides open for the drawstring to pull through. And then I sew up each leg together, um, as well connecting all the cr four points of the crotch together. Then I take um, the shorts, they're inside out still, and a tiny safety pin, and I pin that to some ribbon so that I can use it to guide uh, the ribbon through the waistband hole that we made earlier um, so that I'm able to have a drawstring kind of effect on the bloomers. Once that's in, I cut the ribbon, turn the bloomers inside out, and they're ready to go on our doll. Um, so I just slide them on the doll, tighten um, the waistband at the top, tie it in a little ribbon, and they're looking pretty good at this point, but I would like them to be a little tighter at um, just above the knees, so I'm just taking a little piece of ribbon on each side and tying it around the knee and in a little bow, so it's just cute and decorative. And that's how they turned out. They're super cute, very easy to make. Okay, next, the socks. Okay, so we're gonna start by making the pattern. And to do that, you're gonna take your doll, or a doll that's the size of your doll, and um, just trace along the leg while the leg is sideways onto a piece of paper to how tall you would like the sock to be. Once that's done, write a line to fold it along the front part of the leg and take that pattern Trace it onto a folded in half piece of fabric that you'd like to make the socks out of. Do that twice and cut those two out. We have two little sock pieces ready to go. Then I'm just taking some needle and thread to hem the top of each one so that there's no fraying edges and such. And then while they're inside out, I fold them in half, pin them, and then just sew from the toe to the top up the side and repeat on the other sock. And once that's done, they're good to go. They just need to be turned inside out, outside, I don't know. They're, they need to be corrected. Um, I'm using tweezers to help. Then I put them on the doll. They look like they fit really good and are a solid length for my project. Um, so just to add a little extra decoration, I'm taking some ribbon that I tied in little bows and applying a little dot of hot glue. So the choker is really easy. I'm just taking a white piece of ribbon, securing it around the neck, and then using a little bit of hot glue to make sure that it stays in place. I place the hot glue around the back and then trim the, the excess off. Once that's done, I just use my tweezers to pick up a tiny little craft pearl and glue it in the center of the choker. Thought I'd just show that really quick, even though it's pretty easy and self-explanatory. And that's what that looks like, and it's pretty cute. Next, I'm doing the hair decorating and making of decorations. So to start, I'm cutting her bangs and separating out two long pieces that will hang out in the front. I put the hair into pigtails with some dollar store elastics, and then I just separate out little sections and put them into braids. This is so that I can string lots of different beads through them. I'm using lots of plastic beads that are multicolored, and there's like star shapes and heart shapes and pearls and stuff like that. So I'm just using a needle and thread to sew those in. Um, I think my favorite ones that I put in this are like mint green stars and mint green hearts, but I'm also using all different sizes of pearls, um, lots of like different colors of pearls as well, like some kind of iridescent purple ones and more white ones and more yellow ones. Trying to fill up each braid 
with lots and lots of different charms and um, accessories. And then I'm taking some polymer clay and making a bunch of tiny little decorations for the hair. They're not really hair clips because they don't clip into the hair, they just are gonna get glued on. But essentially I'm making tons of little designs including um, like sparkles and hearts and clouds. I think my favorite thing that I made for her was this little love letter. Um, it's so cute. And then I'm making also lots of little strawberries. So I'm just using um, Sculpey or Fimo polymer clay. I probably used a combination of both. Anyway, before I bake it, I am using some soft pastels to add a little bit of pigment. I'm using red on pretty much everything just to shade it all a little bit. Then I bake it in the oven for about 30 minutes at um, a pretty low temperature, and I think it burned a little bit. So I'm then going in with some acrylic paint and making sure that everything is as good colored as it can be, um, considering it's burns. Once I feel like the hair has enough decor in it, I have to put the head on the body, pop it on, and make sure it's secure. Then I'm using the area that I left completely unbeaded, which is her bangs and those two front pieces of hair, as the surfaces that the kind of hair decorations are going to go on. And my head canon or idea for her is that she likes to make and collect hair clips and that's why she has so many in her hair. Then I also have taken a bunch of ribbon and made little different multicolored bows and I'm using my hot glue gun to apply those into the hair as well. I thought it would just be a good way to add extra decoration to the hair without adding too much extra weight since ribbon is obviously very light. Then for my finishing touches, I'm taking uh, some Mod Podge and adding a little dot of it all over the body um, in different kind of random spots and then taking these little iridescent pink confetti hearts and applying those to the dots of Mod Podge. Then I'm taking some Pearl X pigment. Um, I think I'm using the iridescent kind of pinkish white purplish duochrome kind of color and I'm putting highlighter on the tip of her nose, her cupid's bow, a little bit on her forehead, and of course her cheekbones, as well as her lips. Then I'm applying some lash glue to her lash line with a toothpick, and then cutting some false lashes in half, um, and using tweezers to apply those and hold those in place till they're dry. And there she is! She's all done. That was the final step. I think she looks so freaking cute. I really, really love Cerise. I think she's an amazing character. Um, so that's all I got for you today. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching till the end. That means a lot to me and I really, really appreciate it. Um, I hope you have a great rest of your day and that you guys are staying safe. Um, I want to say that I've been getting like such nice comments lately on my videos and stuff. It just makes me feel really um, happy that you guys are like so kind and, and I feel really grateful for all the wonderful um, subscribers that I have and I just really wanted to say thank you guys because I haven't really mentioned that yet and um, it means a lot. So that's all I got to say and I really appreciate it. Thanks again for watching and I hope you have a great day. Bye!